Daring Abroad brought to you in partnership with Cop Bank Diaspora Banking. Banking just like home. It's time for Daring Abroad once again, a show that takes you around the world without a passport. And today we are featuring a Kenyan lady whose daring humanitarian work is impacting on many lives here and back home. But first, here is a summary of what we've lined up for you. She runs an organization that helps immigrants settle in the U.S. You need to know where to get the right food, the right neighborhood. Yes, Dr. Trufena Choti's humanitarian work and her journey abroad. I've supported over 20 countries in Africa with different programs. Also on the show, Solution Sako's services to Kenyans abroad as it turns 30. I've invested in real estate. I have invested in agriculture. And are Kenyans living abroad supposed to pay tax back home? Yes and no. There you are. My name is Alex Chamwada and straight to Dr. Trufena Chotis' journey abroad. It's a sunny Friday morning in Maryland and Dr. Trufena Choti, together with her husband and their team of volunteers are up and about, overseeing distribution of food to the local community. They do this every Friday. This food, they say, is organic and culturally appropriate and they support mainly African immigrants. All this is organized under a non-profit organization known as AfriThrive. Thriving has been part of my, my mission in life and that's what thrives me in my daily work. And so looking at this work, I'm a patriot of Africa. Having worked in Africa for the last 15 years and being born and raised in Africa, uh, Africa is in me. So I needed something that could really connect uh, to the African continent and again provide a brighter side that there is hope even when you have challenges. And so bringing up the words, playing with it to come up with a word. So AFRI stands for Africa and then I coined together with Thrive, so that's what AFRI Thrive. AFRI Thrive is a non-profit organization that we registered in 2019. Yes, together with her husband and co-founder, Professor Charles Choti, Trufena has been at the forefront of lending a hand to expatriates from across the globe. What we do is part of caring. For, for the community service, uh, attending to the needs of people who are around you. We have so many families which face challenges. When people move from Africa to America, America is a completely different environment with the very new challenges, socioeconomic challenges. Even the educational system here requires parental attention to the young kids. You need to know where to get the right food. You need somebody to guide you which neighborhood you want to settle down. And if you have a family, you have children, you need to know which is the right neighborhood for your schools. Because here in the U.S., neighborhoods mean a lot. You can land into a neighborhood that really will mess up your children. So we started getting involved in community work and helping people through the church or ourselves, trying to get families that have just come to Orient. And even when you are trying to get a house, you need somebody to co-sign for you because you don't have a credit history. So they can give you a house just like that. Every Thrive focuses on African immigrant communities in the DMV area. When I say DMV area, I mean the area around Washington, D.C. area. It covers part of Delaware, part of Pennsylvania, and also Virginia and uh, Maryland. Our main people are from Kenya, immigrants from Kenya. We serve from Tanzania, we serve from Uganda, 
Nigeria, Ghana, they're all mixed up. And also we serve people from the Caribbean who have also come here. So black people are a core base of the people we serve. And we also have other nationalities. And also we serve white people. We serve people from Europe. So it's a combination of, of different people. Most African immigrants here, they do two jobs, three jobs. They are rarely in the house. So their kids come home in the evening. Nobody supervises them. They end up getting poor grades. And in America, when you, the assignment component is not well completed, the system gets you off. That is what has really affected our young people. And then the kids lose interest in school. So we are trying to, to help families adjust so that uh, our kids can make the best of the American dream. Through AfriThrive, the Chotis have not only been able to help immigrants settle in the U.S., but also provide food for them as well as where they need to be. Our first distribution was about 40 families. Then we kept growing. At the height of the pandemic, we connected with other non-profits that are doing the work in, in food assistance. So in the summer of 2020, we entered a partnership with the DC Central Kitchen. It's a national non-profit that is based in Washington, DC. And they are the backbone of our growth because we had access to the food program they were running, we could get food from them. We started by getting 600 bags of food and we could carry the community. The food that we just distributed today comes from this central kitchen. We have a partnership whereby we get some of the food from them. Dr. Choti, who holds a PhD in International Education Development, has many years of experience in the NGO world. Moved to the U.S. in the year 2000, together with my family, through a Fulbright scholarship that was uh, awarded my husband. Went to settle in uh, the state of Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, with our three children. I went to school for my master's program in Georgia State University. And the year 2005, I was awarded a scholarship to study a PhD program at the University of Maryland College Park. And since then, we settled in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, where we are up to now. I was attached to uh, a national education association called NEA, that is uh, a union of teachers like KNUT. And I was working at the international section. That's the one that gave me exposure to international development. So I started helping teachers unions in different countries implement programs, especially in the gender aspects. Then uh, when I graduated with my PhD program in 2009, I started working with different multinational organizations in the DC area, supporting programs. I have been in charge with uh, programs in Africa. I've supported over 20 countries in Africa with different programs that are funded by the American government, uh, USID, which is um, a development agency, and also USDA, which is uh, the US Department of Agriculture. They have several projects that they run in Africa especially, and I've been supporting them for the last 15 years until I started AfriThrive. Now, over a million people immigrate to the U.S. each year. Of this, a good number hail from Nigeria, Egypt, Ghana, Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, and Sudan. This makes the work being done by AfriThrive quite important. Currently, AfriThrive has a handful of employees and about 30 volunteers who assist the Chotis on their day-to-day -day business. They've also been able to expand operations to include growing of their very own food. So my name's Alicia, I'm the farm manager for AfriThrive. My role as farm manager is um, growing culturally appropriate foods for those in need and also teaching volunteers and anybody in the community to learn about sustainable agriculture. We have a two acre farm site out in Poolsville, Maryland, and we grow things throughout the annual season, uh, growing African indigenous vegetables and many more. So this past season, we've grown uh, beans, uh, corn, managu, uh, pumpkins, tomatoes, peppers. When you talk about food security, it's not just about having money. It is not about being desperate for food. It is about having access 
to the right food, healthy food, nutritious food, just the way you know it, just the way you like it. We have three distribution uh, points here in Montgomery County. We have, and then we also have in Baltimore. Baltimore is the largest distribution point because at one we serve about 400 families. So our volunteers are led by Pia Njeru and she's the one who organizes uh, in coordination with the, our farm manager. They organize and uh, draw a timetable. Speaking of sustainable agriculture and community outreach, the Chotis also run a similar operation back home. We have a non-profit in Kenya called Thrive Ventures Africa that's also involved in the community. We are helping women with uh, agribusiness so that those who want to start their businesses in, in the area of farming, we're looking at uh, starting a school's meals program that where children can have a lunch at school. But then on a personal level, we are also helping a lot of uh, children who are coming from uh, families that are, they either lost their parents or their parents are not able. At the moment, I think we have about 15 of the children that we sponsor in, in different schools. Since we started Avery Thrive, I can say we have been able to achieve a lot. This journey has not been easy as any non-profit, but I, I thank God for my husband who has been my partner in this. By the end of 2022, we had given out one million pounds of food to the community. And that was really a great achievement. Dr. Choti, who is the champion of this initiative, is a hero both home and away but the daughter of Kisi doesn't let the success go to her head. Her motivation continues to be making the world a better place for all mankind, no matter their background. And as we conclude her story, Choti shares what she has learned on our Diaspora Bite segment. Diaspora Bite, brought to you by Top Top Send. Send money to Kenya from the diaspora by simply downloading the Top Top Send app today to get started. What I've learned from the, the, the American setup, we have corporations in Kenya. If the corporations could have that corporate responsibility whereby they give to the community, where they partner with non-profits to impact the community, it would be very helpful. Diaspora Byte, brought to you by Top Top Send. Send money to Kenya from the diaspora by simply downloading the Top Top Send app today to get started. Download and use the code Chums Media and instantly get a cash bonus on your first transfer. Great. Dr. Choti's parting shot on our Diaspora Bite segment leads us into a short break. When we return... I've invested in real estate. I have invested in agriculture. We have a solution app. You can onboard yourself. You register as a member. How Solution Circle is helping Kenyans in the diaspora to invest back home. Stay with us. Greetings and welcome to AMG Realtors Limited. My name is Martin Gedenji. I'm in charge of sales at AMG Realtors Limited. I'm in one of our primest locations, only 30 minutes from Nairobi CBD, only 10 minutes to Thika Town, which means it's one of the favorite and best places for residential development. And that's a reason we've been able to sell out Juja Phase 1 all the way to Juja Phase 4. Where I am at right now, it's 60% sold at Juja Prime Phase 5. So become part of Juja Prime Phase 5 and part of this growing neighborhood by calling us today and be a smart investor.
you're watching daring abroad brought to you in partnership with cop bank diaspora banking banking just like home welcome back and in this second part of the show we feature solution circle and how it is helping kenyans living abroad to invest back home as it marks its 30th anniversary Solution Circle is a licensed Tier 1 deposit taking circle. Circles that fall under Tier 1 category are those with an asset base of at least 5 billion Kenya shillings. Solution Circle was originally registered as Meru Teacher Circle in 1976. Then there was a split that led to the formation of Meru Mwalimu Circle in 1993, which later was rebranded to Solution Circle. We thought the word solution is very uh, important because we are offering financial solutions to our members. Solution Circle has membership not only in Kenya but also beyond the borders. And as the Circle turns 30, its strategy is to continue spreading its wings in Kenya and across the borders with a view to increasing membership. There are those that are in Dubai. We also have uh, members that are in uh, USA. There are those that are in Canada. There are a few in Australia. The campaign now that we are taking out there is that uh, you can join from wherever. I uh, joined uh, Solution Circle in March of 2016. The reason why I chose uh, Solution Circle first uh, was quite personal. Um, it's a circle my mom has been a uh, part of. Uh, she's a teacher, she's a retired teacher, and she's been a member of Solution Circle for well over 30, 35 years or so. And um, I felt that because of uh, what I'd seen, she'd been able to accomplish through being a member of the circle. It was a good idea for me also to join the same circle. With Solution Circle, I would say first, uh, I've been able to build savings. What I like about uh, being a member of a circle is that your savings grow silently. I have enjoyed uh, dividends. Um, I like uh, that my circle is, is run diligently and every year we are able to get some sort of payback, which is quite good. But uh, most importantly, and, and the biggest thing that Solution Circle has enabled me to do is to invest. The state of my finances has changed for the positive uh, because of Solution Circle. I've invested in real estate, I have invested in agriculture. I have taken uh, loans, for example, to buy a car and, and I've paid those back. And of course, the interest rate is much lower than what I would be getting in a, uh, from a commercial bank, which I like very much. I have been able to buy some land in Meru and uh, invest in coffee farming. I've now been harvesting for about uh, two seasons, all which I would not be able to do uh, without Solution Circle. Being based here in Cape Town, where my family is, um, and Solution Circle is in in Kenya, you know, with an office in Nairobi and in Meru, one may think, you know, it's difficult maybe for a circle to serve members who are outside the country, but that has not been the case. I've actually been able to do a transaction while here. I would encourage young people to join Solution Circle as early as possible. I would say I joined late, uh, you know, in my 30s. If I'd joined, say, early in my 20s, I can see how I would have accomplished way, way more, you know, with a longer uh, serving, uh, savings period. Solution Circle had an asset base of over 8.3 billion Kenya shillings as at 30th December 2022. By April 2023, it had over 30,000 members drawn from different sectors the SMEs, the farmers, border border people, the matatus, anybody over 18 or even others, so long as you have somebody to support you, you can have an account with uh, Solution Circle. Currently, the Circle's loan book stands at 7 billion Kenya shillings. Our total deposit is also close to 6.5 billion. And uh, our target is to close this year at uh, 10 plus in total assets. Deposit uh, target this year is 4.3 billion. The circle has grown tremendously. It has worked. It is as if now it has started learning. Because looking at the circle in the last five years, we have managed to open around 16 branches and uh, 16 satellites. <music> 
tulianza tukiwa na magari tano peke yake solution sako walipo finance kununua five vehicles hata mwezi huu kuisha tukao na fleeti ya 10 vehicles sasa tuko na fleeti ya 50 vehicles tangu wakuja mursabet tumefaidika sana wametufanyia mambo mengi kama training na pesa zetu tukiwekaga tunapataga interest na dividend yote pia tunapata walitusaidia upande alone ndo tukapata tractor ya kulima nao wa group nyingine pia wote wale wako marsabet waone mfano wetu vile tulifanya na tukashirikana na solution zako tukaendelea washikane na solution zako waendelee kama sisi solution sako offers back office services and activities which include but not limited to share deposits and credit facilities it also offers front office services and activities which are services similar to those offered by banks. I was very unhappy and disconcerted with the banks. Solution Sako was able to give me some uh, 800,000 shillings. That is when the journey of iFrames began. We've been able to secure more loans to buy equipment like uh, Spectacle Lens Edger at a cost of 4.5 million shillings. The society also continues to invest in capacity building for its staff members who are now 200 in number. Its presence is felt even in remote areas where normal banking services do not exist. In Marsavit, we have never had such an active circle like Solution Circle. I've been able to take my children to school. I've been able to build for myself a residential a smart house that I didn't have before. Even my colleagues, my teachers, they have really benefited from Solution Circle. They have empowered us in other many ways which we can be able to sustain ourselves. In Moyale, Tokuma Women Group used to keep members' contributions in such boxes. Now, Solution Circle has provided a solution to their banking needs. Faida ya masomo tumepata, ya pia pesa tunaweka, alafu tunapata faida hatu. Iyo wa table banking, pia tunapewa 20,000 ama 10,000, mtu anasaidiana, anapeleka mtoto shule, baadaya after two or three months, tunarudisha tena. The SACO also prides in making great steps in the use of technology to enhance efficiency in service delivery. You don't need to go to more service. You don't need to go and see the manager. All these things, they are at your service. You can get them through your phone. We have a version branch, whereby you can join the SACO. Uh, wherever you are. We were the very first circle in Africa to have our own switch and uh, with our own ATMs. Way 2006, we felt that uh, why, why can't we also give our members this comfort? Solution Circle also prides in being the first circle to be licensed by SASRA in agency banking and has subsequently increased the number of agents in its expansion project dubbed Solution Machinani to ensure that members access services conveniently. We serve them, we get some commissions. After we do transactions to our customers, ile pesa we ingia kwa ile working account, we are able to withdraw for free without any changes. Members can also deposit or withdraw cash through a USSD code, Solution Circle mobile application, Valve ATM debit cards, Lipana Solution and Paybill. Solution Circle will support financially, will need a pickup. Your pickup will be able to get your financial aid, you can 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 get your financial aid. Chochote chenye niko naye saa hii naweza kusema imetokana na solution sako. Mala ya kwanza tulichukua loan ya 6 million tukanunua ekatano ya shamba tukakatakatia members kila member akawa na mahali pake pa kukaa. Solution sako si loan peke yake hata wao wenyewe wanafuatilia members wao wanawapea knowledge ambao wanaweza endelea nayo mbele. Most of the members that are from abroad they have bought our very prime lad in Nanyuki. So we are out there to ensure that our members are comfortable. Solution Sako has a great concern for the communities and runs CSR initiatives through the two key pillars, that is education and environment. Through the education pillar, the Sako supported over 60 students 
who emerged top in the 2021 and 2022 KCPE exam in the different regions Solution Circle is located as they joined secondary schools. It is an idea sana kuigisa mtoto form 1 ile shule alikuwa ameto ya Karagaus High School. Ikawa imelipa shule, imemfanyia shop yenye nilikuwa nifanye yenye iko iko shule. So mimi nikaona hiyo solution saku. Ni solution ya kila jawabu lakini mwanadamu. We have held an activity of tree planting in Mero County, almost our Wanda schools. We went around in you know, our electoral areas planting trees. As we are turning 30, we will be launching our uh, solution foundation, whereby we will be sourcing for funds and uh, giving funds to support our CSR initiatives. Interesting to learn about investment opportunities through Solution Circle and how the Circle is helping Kenyans living abroad to invest in their motherland. Time now for our last segment of the show, Back Home with Michael Zimanji. Back Home, powered by Cooperative Bank. Kenyans in the diaspora, are they required to pay tax? Yes and no. For a Kenyan citizen who works abroad, we look at, number one, they are not living in Kenya. They are working abroad and living abroad. So that basically means the only obligation under the law is for them to file tax returns. And I, and I think it is important for us to uh, distinguish that uh, filing of tax returns is actually a legal obligation. But it does not necessarily mean that filing means payment of taxes. And so in that case, anyone who is employed outside of Kenya, living outside of Kenya, is not obligated to pay any tax to the Kenyan government. Kenya runs what we call a source-based taxation system. Where was the income made from? Under this system, there is what we call foreign income. Foreign income in this case is where the income has been earned outside of Kenya. And so where the income has been earned outside of Kenya, there is no obligation to pay tax. However, there is an exemption for income earned outside Kenya. There is another angle that is that of residency. Because if the income is made outside of Kenya, then the law will look at whether the person who is earning this income was a resident in Kenya at the time when they were making that income outside of the country. The law anticipates a number of scenarios when it comes to the description of who would be a resident in Kenya. And the first scenario is where you have a permanent residence here or you have a permanent abode here in Kenya and you are present in the country at any given period of the year of income. The second scenario is where you do not have a permanent abode in Kenya but you are in Kenya for at least 183 days in that particular year of income. And then the third scenario is where you have been in the country, or rather in Kenya, for at least uh, 122 days, averagely, for the last three years. If you meet any of these criteria, then you are considered to have been a resident in Kenya. And that basically means that there is a tax obligation on you. You have to pay tax on income, even though it was made outside of Kenya. Quite fascinating. Yes. But I'm sure Kenyans in the diaspora will want me to ask, with this being put in place, are there any relief that has been considered for Kenyans in the diaspora? It's uh, something we call the double taxation agreements. And uh, double taxation agreements are basically arrangements between uh, different governments in different jurisdictions to ensure that people do not suffer double taxation, so to speak. Then that basically means that you only need to prove that this particular tax let's say, for example, income tax, that I'm obligated to also pay, let's say, in the U.S., and the U.S. has a double taxation agreement with Kenya, once you provide evidence that you have paid tax in any of the two jurisdictions, then you enjoy the, uh, the foreign tax uh, credit. Now, let's go to a unique category of individuals. These are people who are not employed. These are people who have businesses. And uh, the businesses are here in Kenya, even though they're resident elsewhere. Does the law take into account such people? Because companies are also considered to be artificial persons. 
if the company is registered in Kenya, then it is considered to be a resident of Kenya. And that basically means that they, they have an obligation to pay the 30% corporation tax yes. to the Kenyan government. There are other instances where it is, it is entirely a foreign company, but has presence here in Kenya and has been here for maybe more than uh, six months. That is uh, considered a permanent establishment. They are required to pay non-resident corporate income tax of about 37.5%. Okay. Now, anyone who is watching and has heard what you have to say, uh, what advice would you tell them even as they're outside there making the best uh, for them? Number one is to just encourage the Kenyans outside there to keep abreast with what is happening locally. But more importantly, just to avoid um, those unnecessary costs in the form of penalties, like uh, failure to file tax returns. It is one of those very easy processes. If you have to pay whatever amount of money, 20,000 for a company is, is on the high, 2,000 more, maybe over a period of 10 years, is still a significant amount of money. But these are, I think, penalties that can be avoided simply by the knowledge and just filing your tax returns on time. Cooperative Bank, we are you. Finally, before we call it a day, Centum Real Estate has an amazing investment opportunity for all. Yes, introducing 26 Mzizi Court, located at Two Rivers. Get yourself a modern apartment and enjoy state-of-the-art amenities from as low as 4.2 million Kenya shillings. Kindly contact the number on your screen and experience the perks of home ownership. Great, I believe you've learned quite a lot from today's program and it is always a pleasure having your company. Remember, this show is the only show of its kind across the world. On behalf of the team that put up the show together, my name is Alex Chamada and bye-bye from Maryland in the U.S. Daring Abroad, brought to you in partnership with Cop Bank Diaspora Banking. Banking just like home.